Hi. Uh, we're live. I'm always a couple of minutes late because I always forget that I've got to type a little bit in the box about what the meeting's about. So um, I'm at home and uh, Wi-Fi is better, which is good, I think. Uh, we've got a new modem or router or I'm not sure what the difference in a modem and a router is, but we've got a new device back at the clinic. So hopefully the, the Wi-Fi is better back there, but um, I'm at home now. So um, hopefully you won't have the Wi-Fi issues I had last week. So very sorry about that. Um, I've got some questions here that, that um, have come up over the week. And um, also I've been to the a uh, couple of meetings. I've been to the BARPS meeting just gone um, no, sorry, last week that was, yeah, so BARP's meeting last week, which is the Plastic Surgery Association, our annual meeting. Um, and I also went to Brussels the week before, but I, yeah, I suppose since the Brussels one. Um, so good to catch up with people and catch up with what's going on. Um, one, of the, one of the things that I have come home with, <laughs> came home from the BARP's meeting with this, which is nice, which is... Um, a new type of breast implant. I'm hoping because the microphone's here, you're not hearing the background noise that I'm hearing. Um, this is a bee light implant. I heard about them a couple of years ago. Um, one of our um, meetings when I was on the advisory board for the uh, for Nagor, um, and they are uh, a new a new implant, and uh, it's lighter basically. Um, it's lighter than a normal implant. A lot of people feel implants and say they feel heavy so this has addressed that problem uh, they also talk about it because it's lighter it has less um, weight on the tissues um, so something that I might be able to offer uh, I have to talk to hostels to see whether they'll stock them because the hostels are always funny about new things but I think that's a nice new development that uh, we'll see whether that uh, turns out to be a good thing or not they're very expensive which might be an issue, but um, anyway, that's that's that. So uh, light implants, they're called B light implants. They're made by Polytech, who make the polyurethane implants. They're only they, they've um, they've patented this. Uh, I don't know if they patented it or copyrighted it or whatever. They've done something anyway about the white cover. They've made the white cover their own. So they're they're saying if it's white, then it's light or something. They've got some strap line. Uh, they look a bit like the polyurethane implants, but uh, they're actually silicone implants. They've got a silicone shell, but they are going to come out in polyurethane coated coating in the future. So that's interesting. Um, so much for muchness, really, for the rest of the meeting. There was stuff talking about regulation and who should be doing what, whether physiotherapists or who who, who should be injecting um, Botox fillers, all these things. It's, a real worry um, for me. <laughs> we worry for a lot of plastic surgeons. The boards had like one plastic surgeon on the panel and lots of other types of doctors. But anyway, I guess they're the, the guys doing those um, procedures. Not many plastic surgeons. Well, a lot of plastic surgeons do Botox and fillers, but not many. Um, not much of the Botox and fillers done in this country is done by plastic surgeons because I think the hairdressers and dentists and doctors cosmetic doctors do a lot of it so i guess um there's a bit of discussion around there it doesn't affect me too much because most of the stuff that i do is breast surgery does my nose look a bit red see my nose on the, on, the, on my screen um so i've got a few questions here um not many so if you've got any questions chip in i'll try and drag it out um tina tina marie asking about Nose tips, surgery, nose tips, dented, um, I was about laser to flatten out the swelling, nose jobs. I don't do noses, sorry. Um, <laughs> see what I mean about the questions out the world? So I, don't, I have emailed you, I know, or not email, Facebook you to, to talk about that. But um, yeah, I don't, don't do noses, um, I'm afraid. Uh, I'm not sure about laser to flattening the swelling. I think swelling, because I think you just had surgery, and I think swelling is better for a time, really. Let time, let that settle. But um, yeah, you look for someone who specialised in faces, um, but that's not me, I'm afraid. Rachel uh, lives in USA um, and is asking about her her heart tattoo. So 
it's quite a big tattoo on on your arm, Rachel. I don't, I don't know if you're here. Um, and you've had a couple of people. One told you that it would leave your heart shaped scar. One said a Z scar, uh, and I said a straight line scar. Yeah, I mean. Um, my vision for it, uh, the, the, the problem with it is just the outline of the heart that's, that's got ink on it. So the whole centre of the heart hasn't got any ink on it. So I understand why the doctor's saying it'll leave you the heart-shaped scar. Because if you just cut out the ink, it will give you a heart-shaped scar. Or it probably, to be honest with you, it'll probably turn into a circular scar. But I think that'll look weird on your arm. I think a circular scar would look weird. So I would do a straight-line scar, which means I would excise the bit in the middle, which hasn't got any ink on it. But um, I would have to do it in stages. It wouldn't come out in one go because it's quite big. So what, you'd have a scar with a bit of heart outline on either side of it. And I think probably three goes looking at it. But um, um, we'd have to see how we go. It depends on how the tissues heal. And that would leave you with a straight line scar, which um, which I think would be better than the than a, than a heart shape. I mean, I could do it with a circular scar, but I don't think that would look good. Um, and there's different ways of doing it so that's why it's good to get different opinions so see what's best like the z scar maybe just to break up the scar maybe that's why the doctor's doing the z uh, we often do z's to break up scars but it's usually when there's skin tension lines like on the face and things and you're trying to get a scar to lie in a one of the skin tension lines and if you create it into a z then you can get one of the limbs to lie in that uh, line if it's not already in a favorable position Sorry, I'm getting a bit technical there. Um, dissolvable sutures, yes, I would use dissolvable sutures. So yes, you could go back to America, um, but I would say that it's best to check that it's all healed up. Um, so potentially you could go back to America, but I think I would like, to, I normally see you at least, well, I'll see you a week later, and then I normally see you like a six to eight weeks later after that, um, just to check everything's okay. You don't have any wound tissue problems, the scar's okay. I've got to say, I do advise most people, people in the UK often go abroad for surgery. And I say, you know, you've got to be careful doing that sort of thing. Talk about it in my book. I should have a copy of my book here, shouldn't I? Um, if I've got one over there. Uh, that it's not good to go abroad for surgery. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, thanks, Michelle. Thanks for that. Very. Ah. Thumbs up for that one. Um, oh, what was I talking about there? But, oh, yes, going abroad for surgery. Um, so I normally tell people not to go abroad for surgery. So the flip side is true. So if you're in America, to be honest with you, I am sure that people would people will do it in America. So I, I, to be honest with you, I probably wouldn't come here uh, to have that tattoo removed. I think you would be able to find a surgeon in America who could do it. There are plenty of very good surgeons. In this country, I say to people, look for FRCS Plast. In America, it's called board certified. It's the same thing. So look for a board certified plastic surgeon. And I'm sure you'll be able to find someone to sort out your tattoo. So yes, dissolvable sutures. So potentially you could go back, but it's usually best to check the wounds healed. So I would, would, would like you to stay a couple of weeks if you could. And the other thing, st stitches from the inside to minimize scarring. Uh, I've been thinking about that that. I don't know. I'm trying to think what that means. Stitches from the inside to minimise scarring. Yes, I do put deep stitches in to take the tension off. So before, if I'm cutting something out and stitching it, I put deep sutures in to take the tension off, and then I put a layer in the skin. But even the layer in the skin is not. You can't see it. So I guess you could call that inside. Um, and so I, I think I actually think about it. Um, that's, I think, what might, might be what you mean, because a trad traditional scar is a line with dots on either side, like you see Popeye, you know, or a cartoon scar, um, a line with dots on either side. Those dots are stitch marks because the stitch has been left in a couple of weeks, and then when they take them out, they leave little dots on either side. Uh, if you put the stitch, a uh, subcuticular, we call it, so underneath the skin, a dissolvable suture underneath the skin, um, that doesn't leave stitch marks. So that, actually, that might be what you're talking about. So when I answered that earlier, I think I was talking about something else because I think you meant I was talking about taking attention off. But yeah, I do do that sort of stitching. Um, got another question here. Uh, what is microsurgical breast reconstruction? That is a big question. And I could spend the whole thing talking about that. In fact, I think I will spend the whole thing about that because that is the last question I got here. So any questions, get them on um, because I'm going to talk about microsurgical breast reconstruction. Drag that out. Um, what is microsurgical breast reconstruction? Breast reconstruction, uh, it is breast reconstruction using tissue 
of your own rather than using implants. And the tissue from of your own comes from a different part of your body. The most common place is your tummy. So it's the same piece of tissue that's taken when you do a tummy tuck. You take that tissue away. That's called it either a DIEP, D-I-E-P, or Americans call it DEEP, but D-I-E-P, or a tram flap. Um, there's nuances between the difference between those two, but I won't, won't bore you with the difference between a DEEP and a tram. Uh, you can also take it from the buttocks. It's called an S-gap or an I-gap flap. You can also take it from the thigh. It's called a tug flap, T-U-G, transverse upper gracilis. Um, Basically, you can take a, take a wadge of tissue from somewhere in your body and then you keep the blood vessels, you isolate to an artery and a vein that's supplying that piece of tissue. You then cut that artery and vein and then you lift that piece of tissue and you put it into the breast and then you find a, an artery and a vein in the breast and you stitch the artery and vein from the tummy tissue or wherever to the artery and vein that's in your chest wall. And in order to stitch those two together, you need a microscope um, in, during the operation in theatre. So that's why it's called a microsurgical breast reconstruction. It takes a long time, um, and it's a big thing, and it's probably something you need to be talking about to a your surgeon about. <laughs> um, but that's what microsurgical breast reconstruction is, and it's a little bit like, here I can segue this in, it's a little bit like... This came to me when I was in the meeting, actually, at both meetings. You go to these meetings, and the meetings, if you go to a meeting, you talk about breast reconstruction, they will say the gold standard for breast reconstruction is a DEP flap, which is a type of microsurgical breast reconstruction. I used to do quite a lot of them when I was in the NHS. I don't do quite so much, well, I don't do hardly any breast reconstruction now. I do mainly cosmetic breast reconstruction. Occasionally, I saw someone last week, the like week before, for, for re breast reconstruction. So occasionally see people with... Um, uh, good question, Kate. Um, occasionally see someone for a breast reconstruction. Um, but when you go to the meetings, I'll tell you the, the, the gold standard is a Dieppe flap for breast reconstruction. But I would say that's not necessarily the gold standard because it depends on the patient. It's a bit like when you look at a patient who's got a bit of a droop to their breasts and that you'll show it to a load of plastic surgeons, they'll say she needs to lift with implants. But sometimes people, uh, and probably to get the best result, a lift with implants will give the best surgical result. So then you can show that surgical result to your colleagues and say, isn't that good? But sometimes people will accept, in a borderline case, just implants or just a lift. Just implants means that the, the breasts won't be lifted. Um, and just a lift means the breasts won't be bigger. So there'll have to be a compromise there somewhere. But, um, but you can't necessarily say a lift with implants is the gold standard, is what the patient needs, because you've got to talk to the patient to see what they need. Same with breast reconstruction. You can't say a diet flap is the best reconstruction because it takes eight hours in theatre. There's a chance that the operation could fail. It's a big, big, long scar on your tummy. So there's lots of, lots of, um, lots of pros and cons. Pros and cons with everything. Pros and cons with everything. Implants and lifts and all sorts. Um, great. Kate, you have bailed me out. You've asked a question. Thank you for that. Um, how long roughly, I don't know, can everyone see these questions? Anyway, how long roughly does it take for the implants to drop? Currently have one sitting higher than the other, which is making the nipple look odd. 